Hey everybody, welcome to the Booketing. My name is Nathan Iverson. You're on the and host as Brandon Chastine, the scholar who's a baller of reading. Yes, That's man. Jake Menzel, the <laughs> pastor who's a master of bleeding. Yeah, that's all I do. I bleed. No, no, no. Jake, you're the master of reading. You like to read books. He's like the Fisher King. He bleeds and bleeds and bleeds until someone finally brings him the grail. But then that person decides that it's too much of a risk to humanity to actually ever bring the grail back. And so they just let him continue bleeding. Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> Thanks a lot. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> Are we going to watch the movie The Fisher King? Yeah, it definitely fits in. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not watch the movie The Fisher King. Hey, folks, the reason we might be tempted to do that is because we made it to 1500. We, King, we, we've got King Arthur money coming in now. So, you excited, Jake? Yeah. What are you excited most about reading King Arthur? You excited about the words? You excited about the pages? You excited about, like, the crinkle, the, the new book smell, if we order any new books? All of the above. The glue that they use to hold together the cheap binding and the Dover editions? I hope that we get zone books smith zone smith zone books what smith zone books books that are sewn oh i thought you meant like smith's own like it was yeah like a publishing Newman company zone. no that's what you call books that are that's that's how they're bound well we were both type of binding very that you guys knew about books yeah I, I that's a new phrase for me that's very nice but nicely done brandon have i even love to collect books like back when i had a better job in texas brandon's been to... eating a bunch of eggs <laughs> I do. I eat a lot of eggs. I, what? What's going on? <laughs> I said you had egg on your face. Oh, egg on my <laughs> face. I yeah. About how you were stuffing your face just with dribbling. eggs. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Brandon, on my face. Uh, let's just for 2021, folks. I don't want any comments about Brandon being fat. He's not fat. He's very svelte. He's a wonderful looking gentleman, and we don't fat shame on this podcast. No, we don't. Let's not bring. Let's just leave the topic in 2020. That that dumpster fire of a year. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Man, let's leave. You right? Ever. Let's leave. Brandon being fat for 2020. Bringing, leaving that fat in 2020. Leaving the fat in 2020. No, so we're, a little bit of business, folks. Two items of business. Item number one, we have King Arthur coming up. I don't know exactly when we're going to fit it in, but it'll be early this year, I think. You guys think, like, earlier rather than later? Know. Sure. Sure. What so, was the question again? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm so tempted to start over. <laughs> no, don't. No. Okay. Uh I lost my train of thought, folks, but I promised the guys that I wouldn't start over the podcast when this yeah, happened. I never should. And <laughs> Brennan says, I never should, <laughs> with great disdain in his voice. All because I've started the podcast over once or twice. Yes, yeah, but there are some podcasts you started over like eight times. Well, eight's kind of generous, I think. Yeah, I some, mean, like, some are 14 and yeah, we're just sitting least, here. And we're yeah. like, when the cheese not flowing, mm, when the chai is not cheese. correct. When the cheese isn't flowing into Brandon's <laughs> chubby cheeks. <laughs> Here we go. You got it back, Nathan. <laughs> All right. I got the podcast. Woo! Back. Right back. All right. Uh, King Arthur. So item number one, we're going to do King Arthur. We're going to devote a whole month or however long it takes to King Arthur. <laughs> it will probably replace something, honestly, because I don't think we want to do the thing where we stuff it into the cracks like we did with Tolkien. Yeah, that, that was bad. That did, I think we learned from that. Yeah, we learned from that and it didn't really work. I mean- we enjoyed doing those episodes. I think those are good episodes. But what we really enjoyed doing was the Narnia episodes where we could build some momentum and some steam and just kind of talk about it all in mm. one. It, it doesn't make sense to step out of Middle Earth for a while and then step back into it. Or, and so... Did we like the flow of what we're going to be reading? Yeah. Should we tell them what did yeah. they have to look forward to? Yeah. Now, I don't know. Yeah. Tell them, Brandon. Well, we're going to... We haven't decided completely on the texts and stuff and how we're going to do this. We're going to read some of the early histories of Arthur, Monmouth, Wace, and Laemon. Mm -hmm. Probably just put together a collection for us to read and give like a context episode. We're going to then read some Chrétien de Troyes, which uh, Nathan Kitchens kindly gave me a copy of some Chrétien back when he gave us those books. Yeah, that was very kind. Yeah. So we'll be reading some of that. We're going to read Tolkien's translation of Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, mm -hmm. or Gawain, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Probably do some more compilations of the French Grail legend, and then we'll finally get to Mallory. Looking forward to that. That'll be the kind of the big text there. Yeah, and have we decided on a translation for Mallory? I think that one is the best, the one you like. Are we going to do the one that I like? I think so, right? The $38 one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, listen, folks, Mallory is interesting because you can pick up Mallory and you can read him, but... You kind of want a translation. It's a little bit like Chaucer or something like that, or one of those old texts that's completely spelled 
in the most ridiculous medieval non yep modernized way and he also uses this weird construction where he says and then and then and then and then like every sentence has to be linked to the sentence before it and it feels like a translator can do a little cleanup on that and make it for a much more enjoyable which they can reading so that's what we'll be doing so mallory then what then we're gonna do some of the modern treatments Mm -hmm. there will be right before mallory so we'll do the french and then there's also the Lancelot Grail cycle, which is pretty famous. I think we'll actually read sections from that mm-hmm. because that's where you get the story of Guinevere and Lancelot yeah. first. And so we'll read all that will kind of be building up though to Mallory who took all those sources and it'll put those there. He's the bomb. Together. He's the best. Then we'll, the then we'll have to read some Tennyson, maybe some T.E. White. Yeah. Not we T.E. White. Uh, is yes, T.E. White? T.H. White. T.H. White. Thank you. I think T.E. White is somebody different. I think what we'll do with T.H. White is read The Sword and the Stone. I just, Spoiler alert, I don't really like The Once and Future King. I think it's a crummy, hippie book about how stupid Arthur was, and that's no fun to read when you're reading Arthur. But The Sword and Stone's pretty fun, and they made that fun Disney movie, and it'll be fun to talk about, and that's the fun one. So I think we'll do that. Maybe you can talk us into doing some Stephen Lawhead if it means anything to any of you. Just let us know. I know people like that, I think, but I don't really know anything about it one way or another. Howard Pyle. Howard Pyle. Yeah, we could do some Howard Pyle, although he's really just d- taking Mallory and making one for kids, yes. I think. Yeah. So, but we could at least crack open a Howard Pyle and yeah. look at it and tell you what, what, what we think about it. Maybe that's the one you should read to your kids. Probably is. Uh, the other famous one that's modern is The Mists of Avalon by Marianne Zimmer Bradley, which is kind of a feminist take on the whole thing. I can't imagine why anyone would want us to read it. We're not going to like it. And we'll- Maybe that's why. Yeah. Exactly. So, write in. Send in your thoughts. Dial 1-800-THE-BOOKENING-READS-KING-ARTHUR right now and let us know if you are particularly excited about any of those modern things. You could honestly probably influence us because I don't think we're going to do a lot of, spend a lot of time in the modern King Arthur unless somebody just tells us, maybe unless more than one person tells us, like, Stephen Lawhead's the best. You should definitely read Stephen Lawhead. And then, you know, we might be more excited to do it. Or if somebody thinks there's some reason for us to read Mists of Avalon, then maybe we could read that. So that's item number one. Now, item number two is a bit of a change in the schedule. We are going to, we had a patron sign up a little bit late. Thank you very much for upping your pledge, Mr. Anonymous Patron. And he wants us to read a author that I always want to say is Walter Wangerin, but I think his name is like Wangerin or something like that. Do you know, Jake? Uh, nope. And he wrote The Book of the Dun Cow. It's pretty popular with classical crowds. I yes. I've seen it. It's supposed to be really good. I think Jeremy, my brother, has read it. It is supposed to be really it. good. Our, our good friend from other Warhorn podcasts, Ben Solzer, has read it and has an interesting relationship with it. Maybe we'll have him come on and guest star in one of those episodes. He likes those fantasy books, so he yeah. kind of grew up with it. I know people like. So this is what we're going to do. Because I said to Brandon, you're reading Ready Player Two this year, Brandon. Yeah. Aren't you excited? Uh, No, I'm not. Well, you got to do it. Excited at all, Nathan, actually. Um, And I've been doing my own thinking, Mm -hmm. my own soul searching. Yeah. You searched your soul? I searched my soul. What'd you find there? It was inspired by Dostoevsky. It's like going down the city dump and sorting through all that stuff. Yeah. I found like the garbage pail kids down there. It was Mm -hmm. really (laughs) frightening. Found the garbage pail kids in your soul? Yeah. So I came back up and I decided never to do that again. (laughs) Okay, good. Yeah. But I also decided, as long as I'm committing to never doing things again, I am going to actually refuse to read Ready Player Two. I don't think that that's allowed. That's I think it is allowed, Nathan. It's not in your contract. I mean, Brandon, I don't have a contract. You're not allowed to <laughs> refuse anything we decide. You yeah, no, no. We no, just, no, we, no. I think that I, I decided to read books my, and then we... I'm going to plant my feet here and you guys, should, guys just try to move me. <laughs> oh, boy. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to come to the negotiating table and we can see if we can work something out here. Let me just take a sidebar with Jake here. Okay. Jake, uh, he says we can't move him. I think we could probably just push him and he'd kind of roll. <laughs> it takes a lot of ca- a lot of energy to get that initial. Yeah. You know, just the inertia of just like a still Brandon. Yeah. The, inertia, to overcome. the inertia of a still Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm writing that book. <laughs> <laughs> Keep not paying attention, Brandon. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sure you guys are saying all sorts of great, <laughs> wonderful things about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I've you're, got confidence. You're, you're a great guy. We're you're friends. thin. You're svelte. You're wonderful. All right. So, yeah, the inertia of a still Brandon. <laughs> He's fat, though. 
Right. Like I, I think that's the that's the point. So it's like once you get him started moving, then mm -hmm. it's hard to stop him. Right. He's got the momentum, but it's he like sort of he's getting that things. first little bit going. That's going to be a challenge. It's like the movie The Blob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly uh -huh. once brandon starts moving he absorbs things into <laughs> himself uh -huh. yeah and he's just bigger and bigger mm -hmm. yeah well <sighs> so we just need something to just get the push just get right push. and then and then brandon will be ours forever and <sighs> yeah he's talking about his soul we were uh -huh. basically that's what we want right mm -hmm. oh, what does one give in exchange for such a thing a little bit of money probably do you guys just say i have soul i believe that you guys have soul too keep going Okay, this is yeah, great. Yeah. You guys are such good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not worth much. Like, I hear there's garbage pail kids <laughs> and stuff in it. <laughs> so, sounds like a real dank piece of property. Oh, rat dump. Rat dump. <laughs> yeah, that's the word. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're starting out 2021 strong. So, you want to pay a little bit of money for the rat dump? A little bit. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we can't afford that much, but you know what we well, should do is we should get our patrons, <laughs> those chumps, to go up a little bit. To pay bit. for it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they'd have to increase their giving. We'd need more people to buy in. Yeah, we can't afford to pay Brandon anything right now. Right, but if they, you know, maybe got us to like $2,000. Yeah, well. A month. Yeah, they'll, those, those losers don't have anything better to do with their money. <laughs> <laughs> Your stimulus checks, guys. Oh, stimulus. Yeah. It's all okay. coming. Biden's going to make us rich. Should we end the sidebar and pitch it to Brandon and then pitch it to the people? A little bit of money to Brandon and then we get to make him read whatever we want him to read. Read whatever? He's, so we, what should we make him read? I, I guess Ready Player Two. Ready Player what. Two. And then, it, I don't know, does Ernest Klein have other books? He does. He's got one called Armada. Yep. We got to do that one. Yeah. Oh man, we're going to make Brandon dance. Yeah, exactly. We don't need to tell him that. No, 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 Just no. Just tell him no, no. we we'll want to offer him some money yeah. if the patrons get us to $2,000. Yeah, no. How would that be? Yeah, no. And, and then we don't even need to discuss the Ready Player Two side of it. It's right. just like once he's under obligation. Right. We could just dangle a donut in front of him, but probably <laughs> he's smart enough to know he can buy donuts with money. You think he has that level of intelligence? Wait, guys, I just I heard. So. I heard. Did you just say I can buy donuts with money? I'm yeah. not trying to overhear what no, you guys. Brandon, I think we're ready. Um, yeah, you can buy donuts for the money. That is really fascinating. And now, now what if do you, you think? If you had a little bit more money, what would you do with it? I'd probably buy donuts now instead of trying to, you know, perform for them down on 7th Street here in Bloomington. Yeah, no, that was a terrible People idea. People generally just throw them at me. I, I'd, I'd play like this goofy i get in a costume and then people will like throw them at me it's a bear costume mm -hmm. also don't like wear a shirt so i can wiggle my belly and people like throw the donuts <laughs> and they stick on me yeah, yeah yeah the ones that stick though and i can actually eat those are great so but i can actually buy these though how many people throw donuts at you and lots why? lots of people <laughs> <laughs> it seems like there's got to be a cheaper way to show every, their disdain every friday night <laughs> <laughs> it's like a thing now <laughs> Oh, anyways, that's what throw donuts at fat man yeah, the event is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah You've okay. heard of it. Yeah. Well, now you know. Well, that's not but very if I could get some money, I could stop this. I could stop doing this. Well, Brandon, we would like to yeah? offer you in return for reading Ready Player Two. Oh, okay. Some money. Okay. Donut money. Donut money. <laughs> get Brandon some donut money. Yeah. Okay. Well, I think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I like the idea. I like the idea, except that I have to read. Ernest Klein. So I want you guys to have some, so give me something on your end. And I've got a proposal. I okay. Think. It just came to me. Yeah. If I'm going to have to read Ernest Klein, Jake's going to have to read Dickens. I was already on our list for 2022. So, or maybe I shouldn't say that. Um, How about this? Yeah. I won't read it and talk about Dickens with you guys ever again. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty good deal for Jake. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, man. <laughs> no, uh, not only are we going to have to read this one, we'll have to read some more Dickens in the future too. Until Jake finally likes Dickens. Yeah, you don't have any leverage over uh, the show. You're not even a, an employee. So, sorry. You don't, you don't get to make this. I'll tell you what. Let's I take all discussion of Ernest Klein and Ready Player Two off the table. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can, you know, revisit that down the line, you know, once you're hired. How's that work? There we go. Are you guys making me an offer? <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what, folks? Wasn't that a hilarious bit that we just did? Oh, that was <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> uh, listen, it's true that Brandon has volunteered 
How many hours do you suppose, Jake, that Brandon has volunteered to this show? Countless. Nathan. Untold. Yeah, that's right. Countless hours. Brandon has volunteered a lot, and we we don't pay him anything. If anything, me and Jake laugh about it behind <laughs> Brandon's back. Like, this guy, he like gives us all <laughs> this value, and what a sucker! We use it to pay our salaries. That's no, no, great. no. We're that's not true. We're very grateful for Brandon's time yeah. and the dedication that he puts into reading the books to coming up with these great contexts, everything that he does. How many episodes of the booking would you say that we have? Ah, uh, we've like got true episodes or not, not, tr- I mean, like <laughs> as opposed to the fake ones. <laughs> well, there's the number and then there's like the other number, right? So, I mean, let's see. So the number is 232. There's 232 pieces of content that have gone out individually. Okay. And those probably average out at about 45 minutes. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's just the talking part. Yeah. And then there's the time spent reading the books and then all the other books and the research that Brandon does for all of his contacts. Yeah. So, I mean, you're talking hundreds of hours. Yeah. Hundreds and hundreds of hours. Which Brandon's very cheerfully given for free for five years now, six years, whatever it is, I guess six years. Like we're going into our sixth year and we're very thankful and grateful for that. We would like to pay Brandon something. Now, Warhorn Media, as you know, if you've ever listened to any of our end of the year giving <laughs> pitches, <laughs> famously, we run a pretty tight ship. We have to. So it can't be a lot for one. And two, we really do need you guys to just decide, yeah, this is worth doing and we're going to we're going to cover it. Yeah. And the way to make that happen is to up our monthly giving to two thousand dollars a month. And that'll that'll allow us to continue doing what we're doing you know, steady state and mm-hmm. also uh, begin to pay Brandon just a little bit yep. of a of a thank you for uh, his time and effort. Yeah, we'd like energy. to at least give him some, you know, monthly beer money, whatever it is that Brandon does with his money. And I would, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, Brandon would appreciate it. So, and in return, we are going to dangle Ready Player Two. So, Ready Player Two is now off the table, will remain off the table until such time as you guys are ready to help us pay Brandon. Right. So that's so that's that's the fun part, but the serious part is we would really love to be able to pay Brandon something and we'd so And I really would appreciate it. And all joking aside, I do want people to know that I really enjoy being on this podcast. It's not like, you know, this is this is you guys showing your appreciation to me. I appreciate that. No, yeah, but Brandon do, Brandon did not like, come and demand yeah. this and we're trying so. to sugarcoat it with our no, I mean, the truth is, more often than not, when we talk about this podcast and Brennan's involvement in it with Brennan, he's actually just really grateful that he has an outlet and a place where, I mean, that's what I hear yeah. all the time. And so, he loves to serve you guys. He loves the opportunity to serve you guys and to read along with friends. And yeah, and this that's gives, what you guys are. This gives me an opportunity to still talk about books. And I love having that opportunity. Mm-hmm. Your so. wife famously only wants to talk about Gilmore Girls. Yep. That's right. And outside of this, my life would be talking about title and right. genealogies, which has some interest as far as literature, but it's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, in any case. And even without this podcast, I don't think recent developments in my life that have happened, like, you know, finally being published, all that, mm-hmm. which is fun. I don't think it would have happened without this. So I do appreciate what the bookending has allowed me to do. And I appreciate you guys. Yeah. And all the th- now we're nice- all published poets. Yeah. Yep. That's and right. One of us may be a little more prestigiously published than the rest of us. Oh, Jake, you, you shouldn't have. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nathan has now been published by the New Yorker. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I was I used, my that used to list. be prestigious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's right. You sent him your laundry list. Oh, that's an awful thing. I know a lot of the listeners of the show are already giving a lot. So what I really would love for you to do is just tell a friend about the show. I think that that's probably the way to actually make this goal happen is uh, let's let's just get the word out. Yeah, I I know that a lot of our listeners hearing us make this appeal that are already giving are going to be like, oh, Brandon, let me up it just a little bit. Let's hold off on that. Mm-hmm. Can we hold off on that? Can we ask you to not up your giving, but to really try to add at least one friend yeah. for any amount for a couple months? Let's see how it's going. Be awesome to see that Patreon get up to a hundred people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know I, that you're out there. We know we get. We, we have we get thousands of downloads, so we know that yeah. you guys are there. Mm-hmm. And so if you if you're the kind of person that's like, well, you know, I've never really been 
motivated by anything that they're actually offering us. But I really love the show. And maybe Brandon's your favorite part, as he is for lots and lots of people. Mm -hmm. This is a great opportunity to feel like, well, forget, uh, you know, the rewards. The rewards are all great. But, you know, this money is for Brandon. So, yeah. Obviously, you know, if you really want to up your giving, go ahead. But, 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 but I think let's just hold tight. Let's not instantly up. Yeah. And let's see if we can't bring in some more people and put it on uh, some of those people who've been out there lurking and listening and enjoying things to, to chip in. The, the, yeah, the patron number has been kind of hovering in the late 50s, early 60s for a long time. It'd be nice to hit 70 patrons, 80 patrons, and then like Brandon said, into 100. the 100. Maybe after we hit this goal, that should be our next goal is to get to 100 patrons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If well, this doesn't get us there. You know, 20 patrons at $5 each is a, a fifth of the goal. Right. Right. So 25 at five apiece is a quarter of it or something. I don't know. Right. So... You guys, you guys can help. Everybody can help. Everybody can pitch in and help us help us reach this goal. Yeah, and we would really appreciate it. We yep. love all you guys and yep. enjoy making this podcast. Want to keep doing it. Yep, yep. And I think it's probably worth saying it's gotten harder to do. And then that's not a threat or don't, don't hear that the wrong way. We love doing it. We're committed to keeping it going. But me and Jake live in Evansville as, as of the time that you're hearing this. Brandon lives in Bloomington. There's about two hours of driving that somebody has to do. And so... I think it's a good time to make it a little bit more worth Brandon's while just, you know, even if mm-hmm. we're just paying for the gas that he might have to use to come do some episodes. Sometime. Yeah. Let, let's part of the deal here is most of our recording equipment and everything's going to co- end up coming down to Evansville. So we're also going to, in addition to everything else we ask Brandon to do the reading, the research and everything else, more often than not, we're actually going to be asking Brandon to, to make that trip to mm. record with us and that's time away from his family and everything else. So help us help you help us make it sweet and keep it sweet so that um, this is something we're all really excited to continue doing. Yep. And don't call Brandon fat. I, we, you know, it's just like, how demoralizing is it? I'm yeah. just trying to keep this guy on the podcast. He tells me he's don't like, even imply it. He's it's sick of really, doing it. Like, yeah. really appreciate you. He's like, it, yeah. it, it's let me get away from my stupid family. So at least there's something there. Yeah, but I you really know, like it that you guys never talk about my weight, even behind my back. Right. You guys are the best friends a guy could ever have. <laughs> 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 We're gonna be back with the brothers Karamazov. I know you've had to put up with a bunch of. Christmas recaps and reduxes and all that. And you're probably, I, I know you love that stuff, but I know you're ready for us to actually get back into books. Actually, read, read another book. We will be back with some fantastic content for you on, Kar- uh, on, on old Karamazov, on what's his face? Dostoevsky. Dostoevsky. Next week, I'm really looking forward to that discussion because Dostoevsky is a fascinating figure and a polarizing figure. Or, or maybe it's because I feel polarized, but everybody else just seems to like him. People are well, like, this guy's not, great. Not so sure about that. Well, you know, you just, you, you, this is one of the novels that people routinely call the great novel, The Brothers Karamazov, and I just don't get it. But I'm not just going to heap garbage on it either, folks, like Brandon's soul. Yeah. It's, anyway, we'll talk about it next week, but Brothers K, looking forward to it. Yep. And we'll be ushering a bunch of new patrons into the patron pantheon next week. So nice. To get some names. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Getting some new names. We'll be back. Patreon.com forward slash the bookening is the place to, I guess we probably should have said that URL at least a dozen times by now. Patreon, Patreon forward slash dot com forward slash the bookening. The That's bookening. right. Patreon forward slash dot com. Dot com slash forward slash forward no no, no. <laughs> we can't forward. make a joke out of this patreon.com forward slash the booketing you want to throw a www in front of that that's you your sure business can. you sure can not necessary though not necessary you just type that into the 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 bowser the, <laughs> the browser <laughs> the bowser and mario knows <laughs> yeah yep 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 you jump over the thing you grab the axe he falls in and you save the princess and you save the princess or probably Toad's just waiting there. Yeah. And the princess is in, in another castle. And that's kind of heteronormative anyway. <laughs> we don't need to be saving princesses. It's 2021, Jake. Princess saves you. Yeah, that's right. You don't want to be deep platform, do you? <laughs> Back in Mother America, <laughs> yes. princess saves yes. you. <laughs> no matter how, the princess saves <laughs> you.
<laughs> ah, yes. Why have we done Russian themed podcasts before and not mentioned the great Yakov Smirnov and his wonderful comedy? Maybe we'll do that next week. All right. Goodbye, folks. Goodbye, folks.